Well, we mentioned to you earlier, this ball game will start maybe 10 or 15 minutes late because it's the uh, NBC game of the week. And we're going to talk to uh, Yankee President Al Rosen. Big league for 10 years. Had 192 home runs over that span. Drove in 717 runs. Lifetime 285 hitter. Played in a couple World Series. 1948 with the Cleveland Indians. And also... 1954 with the Cleveland Indians. One thing, though, I think I would probably like to talk about more than anything else. If you want to talk about the future, was the year he had in 1953 when he was the most viable player in the American League, the only player to be chosen unanimously. He drove in 145 runs. And it had to be a typical Al Rosen year. No, it was a great year for me. <laughs> I wish I could have said it was typical. I'd like to think that, but... Uh... That was my best year in the big leagues, as you well know, and it was very gratifying to have been selected by my peers as the most valuable player in the league. That's a, a singular honor that uh, cannot be matched in any, with any other honor in baseball. And nobody else uh, has ever been chosen unanimously. There was always some, somebody saying that somebody else might have done a better job, and I think that is, is the real unique thing of that. Well, at that time, I was the first. Since that time, there have been a, uh, a two or three others that have uh, received that kind of a, an honor. Uh, Mickey Mantle, I know, did one year, and um, uh, of course, there was only one Mickey Mantle. You know, he was such a great, great player. It was good to see him here the other day. Uh, I'd like to see more of him. Well, Al Rosen, uh, let's talk about the administrative job. On the field, of course, uh, we like to look back at those things and uh, look at great careers, but now uh, it's another challenge, uh, the administrative part of being president of the New York Yankees. Well, as you know, baseball has changed. Uh, the magnitude of the uh, uh, running a baseball club today is far different than it was 15, 20 years ago. Uh, increased attendance, increased advertising revenues, uh, things to do with radio, television, uh, the entire gamut of the thing has gotten so much bigger, uh, and it is a challenge. Fortunately, we have a very good staff here at, uh, with the Yankees, and I'm just the guy who has to make the final decisions, and as the great Harry Truman once said, the buck stops here. You know, as, as you mentioned, the involvement of baseball getting bigger and bigger, you no longer have, I don't think, for the most part, one guy who is capable of handling everything. Uh, uh, things have to be delegated now. It's a very difficult, uh, yes, you're right, Bill. You can't, uh, so one person has to make the final decision because everybody needs someone to go to. Uh, and as long as our people come to me and have the facts and we can make that decision, then I'm willing to accept the responsibility for them. And as I say, we do have a very good staff, uh, and I'm fortunate to have inherited such a staff, and I hope that uh, uh, I can develop the kind of leadership amongst those people that uh, they will want my job. I feel that the legacy that a man leaves uh, when he leaves the position is to have a lot of people trotting around for the top banana's job. Al, you were one of the original uh, purchasers, or you were one of the original groups that purchased the Yankees originally from from CBS when uh, George Steinbrenner put his group together early. And I know I'm from Warren, Ohio, and I followed the Indians for so long and just go up and watch Al Rosen play and Larry Doby play and Dale Mitchell play and Garcia and Wynn and Bob Lemon now manager of the Chicago White Sox. And at that point, and I said this uh, a long time ago, uh, Phil Rizzuto laughing around the edge of Phil, it, it took some doing for me to become a Yankee fan. And uh, how about you now? You played so many years. You know, and you know the rivalry between the Yankees and the Cleveland Indians. You know how intense that is uh, to the Buckeyes, the people from Ohio. Well, I'm the first one to admit that when I played against the Yankees, I had a a, uh, a overwhelming desire to beat them. Uh, I despise them, not individually, not not in a way that we talk about uh, holding grudges, that sort of thing, but. I wanted to defeat them so bad because they were the champs, and to beat them, you were going to be the champ. And then the one year that uh, I was in, uh, helped to be instrumental in uh, victory in 1954, we finally beat the Yankees, and then we lost four straight to the Giants, and I had to go around all winter explaining how we lost four straight. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. You know, I think one of the things that happens, Al Rose, is that when you get away from the ball club, uh, I've played a long time with the Cardinals, but I go back there and I always see Lou Brock. And uh, you don't really have a closeness anymore with that, uh, that former ball club. No, that's true. I've, uh, as you know, I lived in Cleveland for many years, and you 
used to go down to the ballpark and as a matter of fact went out as a batting instructor every spring uh, and I got to know some of the younger players but here uh, in the last number of years I, I just gotten completely away from knowing young players and there are no more veterans that uh, other than the fact that there are some managers around and some coaches around and those are the fellas that I still like to chew the fat with and and we, you know we always the pitchers hit shutouts and the hitters hit home runs you know how that is yeah now let's talk about this present Yankee ball club. They're the world champions, uh, defending world champions, I guess we should put it. Uh, they won uh, last year, 1977, a great World Series uh, with Jackson hitting the three home runs in, in the final game. Now looking at the roster this year uh, with the addition of Gossage and uh, Eastwick and with the players knowing each other better this year, uh, it's not going to be easy. It's never easy, but I think uh, it should be more tranquil this year, and I think the team will put it together earlier this year. Well, I certainly hope so. It would make my job easier to get out with a 10-game lead and, and go all the way in that manner. Uh, we do know that uh, other ball clubs and our chief rivals have uh, strengthened themselves, but we do feel with the acquisition of uh, Rich Gossage and Raleigh Eastwick and the uh, acquisition of Jim Spencer uh, will, be, will really pay great dividends for us. So we do think that we're going to be a better ball club. We do think that we're going to win it again, and uh, I know that the fans in Yankee land will, will love to see another pennant flying over uh, that flagpole. We're talking to Yankee President Al Rosen, and we'll be back with uh, more from Al after this five-second pause for station identification. You're listening to New York Yankee Baseball on 1460 WOKO Albany. Al Rosen talking about the resurgence of the Yankees. They had last won in 1964, losing that series to the Cardinals and struggled a while. Now they won again in 1976, the American League, and finally world champions in 1977. And coinciding with it, I think, uh, although a lot of people would like to say there are other things, I think there's a rise in attendance uh, in baseball. You know, for a long time, as the Yankees win, it seemed the baseball attendance went. And, uh, uh, baseball uh, has come on again, I think, and reestablished itself as, as the number one sport in this country. It's a great game, and we have great stars in it, and uh, uh, de 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 the designated hitter rule has added more scoring to the American League games, and uh, we just feel that uh, you're right, Bill, when you say there's a resurgence. There were over 38 million fans that watched baseball games last year, and we think that uh, this year will be another sizable increase in the number of people. And we're delighted that they come to the ballpark, and uh, we always hope that we can entertain them and uh, give them their money's worth. You know, the one thing that disturbs me, the, uh, the rules sometimes uh, change, and I, I hope that the rules makers will continue to allow the players to play and don't legislate too much. Uh, well, I've heard you. I know what you're saying. Uh, and we feel, you know, you and I played in an era where it was caveat emptor. And, and now we see things that are happening. And uh, maybe it's for the better of the ball game. We're protecting the second base and the shortstop a little bit more. And uh, the hitter uh, has a little more confidence up there. Because well, I don't, if, if he can't hit, I don't want to have that confidence. I, I don't want them to, to legislate the, the poor hitters. You know, just... Uh, I don't want batting practice. And I'm a, I, 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 I like to swing the bat. I'm sure you've been throwing it. I've been throwing it. I've been hit. But uh, I just feel that uh, if you can't hit, uh, don't allow the pitcher to throw batting practice to lie to him. I think no, it should I, be about a base of the ability. I think that... Uh, <laughs> I'm a little comment. I are. know you are. And I think that... Um, uh, some of the things that we're doing for baseball might be good, some might not be so good, and to guys like you and to me, who are used to having that ball thrown at you if you hit one, or if the guy in front of you hit one, listen, you know how many fights were created out around the pitcher's mound because you got stuck in the ribs, okay. and and uh, you were throwing that, and I think that uh, some of that is, adds a little excitement to the game. I agree. I, I, I agree. I think that, uh, well, basically, I think you should uh, protect the pitcher a little bit. Well, I, all the rules that have been made have been made for more offense, and that's good. But the only people I hear complaining about uh, offense, the team is down about 10 to 2. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I hope we get about 10 runs in the first couple of innings today. You know, this Yankee ball club put together, uh, we, we talked about it, but they have all of the ingredients to, to really uh, become one of the better teams in the Yankee baseball history. We're going to have great pitching. Uh, you know, Thurman Munson behind the bat uh, has no peer. Reggie and uh, Mickey Rivers and Bucky Dent. Our defense has been super. You know that. You've seen us 
hit the cutoff men, and uh, the double plays have come at the opportune time, and Greg Nettles is a fine third baseman, and Pinella, and we've got Finch strength, and we just feel that everything is going to go well for us, and barring injuries, and that's no cop-out, but barring injuries, uh, our ball club is going to be a, a very representative club being the sick of the race, and I think that we're going to go all the way, and as I say, I don't believe there's a better club than baseball, Bill. Let's talk about the Red Sox. I think uh, looking at the American League East, uh, if you go on paper and look at rosters, they would probably be the closest uh, to the Yankees. And perhaps, uh, although they've gotten off to a bad start, the Baltimore Orioles, because Weaver seems to somehow get that team on track at some point in the season. He's a fine technician. He knows how to manage a ball club, Bert Weaver does, and he's got some fine young ball players. Um, uh, I mean, I said Bert, I'm in Earl, of course. Uh, the Red Sox, as you know, are are a very strong ball club. They've helped themselves immeasurably. The acquisition of Dennis Eckersley will give them an added starter. Uh, of course, Mike Torres going over there is going to give them a, a great deal of help. They, they're a fine club, Jerry Remy. They've done a lot, but they've given up a lot as well. And it remains to be seen whether or not their pitching is going to be strong enough. And one thing, uh, Al, yesterday uh, we understand that Bill Campbell uh, had to have a couple of shots to quarter zone in, in his arm, so he might be out for three or four days. To balance that off, Louis Tion has been throwing well, and he says he's ready to go, and he should be back on the table list within a day or two. Louis Tion's an amazing guy. Uh, he's 35 going on 50, or should I say 50 going on 35? I, you know that Louis Tion was pitching for Cleveland when I used to go down as a batting instructor. I, that's got to be like 100 years ago. But I, Louis is a fine competitor, and I know that uh, his desire to be a great pitcher uh, is the thing that makes him such a fine pitcher. Al Rosen, uh, we talked about Baltimore. They'll be in here Monday night, Monday night and Tuesday afternoon to play uh, the Yankees, and there'll be a chance to uh, see Earl Weaver and Billy Martin go through go through their antics. They're they're friendly rivals. Well, I think there is a little undercurrent of a little uh, <coughs> a little not liking between them. You know, because a couple of years Martin has felt that he should have been uh, manager of the year, and a couple of years Weaver thought he should have been manager of the year. And there is certainly still that kind of rivalry in baseball. Well, of course, and that's good because it means that a club gets up. Uh, uh, the Yankees will be up because they want their manager to look better than uh, the manager of the other ball club. And vice versa, uh, it'll be, it happen on the Baltimore club. Uh, Billy's a great manager. He's a tremendous competitor, a fiery leader. He knows how to handle his men. And uh, I think absolutely the best manager in the business today. Al Rose, good talking to you. Thank you very much. May it's you, always a pleasure. May you be absolutely the best president in the history of baseball. Thank you very much, Bill, and from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> Thank you, Al. Hey, always good talking to you. Thank you. Well, the umpires now have come out, as we have just finished talking to the president of the Yankees, Al Rosen, great player in the American League, one time most valuable player. Back in 1953, when he hit 300 and drove in 145 runs with the Cleveland Indians. Well, this Sunday, that's tomorrow, it's pennant day here at Yankee Stadium. This brand new item, a Yankee pennant featuring a full-color picture of the 1977 World Championship team will be free to every fan 14 and under who comes out to see the Yankees play the final game against the Chicago White Sox. That's Pennant Day tomorrow, game time at 2 o'clock. Well, the umpires I mentioned are odd. Bob Lemons out there with the White Sox lineup and uh, Dick Hauser, the Yankee third base coach, has the Yankee lineup and will run through the lineup quickly for you. Ralph Garr will lead off and play left field for the White Sox. He'll be followed by Chet Lemon in center field. George Orta will play second base, and he'll bat third. Batting fourth and playing right field for the White Sox, Bobby Bond. Lamar Johnson will play first base. He'll bat sixth. Check that. He'll bat fifth. Ron Bloomberg, the designated hitter, will bat sixth. Bloomberg will be followed in the White Sox lineup by Eric Soderholm at third base. Then Don Kessinger will play shortstop. He'll bat eighth. And Wayne Nordhagen will catch and bat ninth. And on the mound for the White Sox right-hander Francisco Barrios. The Yankees will have Willie Randolph leading off and playing second base. Mickey Rivers will be in center field and bat second. Jim Spencer will be the designated hitter. And Spencer will bat third. Reggie Jackson will play right field and bat fourth. Chris Chambliss will play first base. He'll bat fifth. Chambliss will be followed by the left fielder, Roy White, in the sixth slot. Cliff Johnson will catch and bat seventh. Bucky Dent will play shortstop and bat eighth. Mickey Kletz will play third base, and he'll bat ninth. And on the mound for the Yankees, right-hander Ed Figueroa. 
And we understand that injuries uh, have sidelined a couple of Yankees. Sir Munson's knee evidently acting up and Greg Nettle's shoulder evidently acting up. So that's why they're out of the lineup. Replaced by Cliff Johnson, moving Spencer into the DH spot. And Mickey Clutch playing third base for Greg Nettle. The umpires this afternoon behind the plate will be Terry Cooney. At first base will be Al Clark. Umpiring at second base, Bill Kunkel. And over third base, Bill Deegan. On the scoreboard in the American League, Detroit and Toronto, no score there at the end of one. The Texas playing at Boston. Doc Ellis on the mound for the Rangers and Bill Lee for the Boston Red Sox. Ellis 1-0, a victory over the Yankees, and Bill Lee 1-0 for the Red Sox. We have no score there yet. Milwaukee's playing at Baltimore. Jerry Augustine against Jim Palmer. Palmer, after shoulder troubles, making his first start for the Orioles. Seattle's playing at Minnesota. California playing out at Oakland this afternoon. And tonight, Cleveland will play in Kansas City. The National League game scheduled in the biggies. Mets playing at Montreal. Pittsburgh playing at Chicago. Phillies playing the Cardinals in St. Louis. Cincinnati at Houston. And a couple of night games in the National League. The Atlanta Braves playing the Dodgers in L.A. And the Giants playing the San Diego Padres out in San Diego. Well, Bob Lemon and third base coach Dick Hauser have departed. Umpire still at home plate looking around. And we have a list here of stations broadcasting Yankee baseball in the Rochester area. Station... Uh, W-R-O-C. Here's the word always have trouble saying. Poughkeepsie. Poughkeepsie. Station W-H-P-N. Also in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Home of the Allentown Wings. Station W-A-L-N. And in Tamaqua. <laughs> W-Z-T-A. Everybody's here in Yankee baseball. I understand there's a station in Hawaii that carries Yankee baseball. So we can get us down to Virgin Islands. Well, we're waiting for the Yankees to take the field. For the Yankees, it'll be Ed Figueroa. Last year against the White Sox, Figueroa won one and lost one in a couple of ball games. Started both rows, pitched one complete game in 16 and a third innings. Gave up 14 hits, five earned runs. So his ERA is 2.76. In those 16 plus innings, Figueroa struck out six and walked three, and he split two decisions with the uh, Chicago White Sox. Barrios, who pitched well for the White Sox against the Yankees, was 2 0 against the Yankees last year, and lifetime 2 0. Overall, the right hander won 14 and lost seven for the Chicago White Sox. And we'll be back with more right after this. Tired of the same old slum drum sandwiches? Well, you can change all of that with a submarine sandwich from Big Don's. How about a hot sub? Big Don's has them. Hot Italian meatballs, sausage, or pepperoni. Over 30 different submarine sandwiches to choose from with fresh meats, cheese, and vegetables. Big Don's submarines are really big. Not just big rolls, but they stuff them full of the finest meats, cheese, and freshest vegetables available. The Big Don's sub is a true meal in itself. And how about veal and peppers made with Big Don's own wine sauce? It has that something special, but it takes to carry Big Don's name. Big Don has eight convenient locations in the Capital District. Albany, Latham, Rotterdam, Troy, Westmere, and now Manan. How's that for convenience? Whether it's a cold or hot meal you're looking for, Big Don's has it. All subs are made fresh right in front of you. If it's variety, quality, and value you're looking for, Big Don's has it all. Stop in today and enjoy a meal like never before. After the White Sox leave, we mentioned that the uh, Baltimore Orioles come on. They'll be in here Monday night and also Tuesday afternoon. And the Yankees go on the road for a couple of ball games to play the Toronto Blue Jays up in Toronto. That'll be Wednesday and Thursday afternoon. Then they'll be back home here on Friday, Friday night, the 21st of April, to play the Milwaukee Brewers. Brewers off to a great start. They were 5-0 before losing to the Baltimore Orioles yesterday by a score of 6-5. So the Brewers will be in Friday night. They feature Larry Heisel, Cecil Cooper, Gorman Thomas has been hitting the ball well for them. 
A new shortstop, a youngster by the name of Paul Molitor. Robin Yount still on a disabled list. He'll probably be on there for another 18 days. The Brewers will be here Friday night. They'll be here Saturday afternoon and also on uh, Sunday afternoon. And the Yankees will go on a road trip, play a couple of ball games in Baltimore. They'll be there Monday night and Tuesday night. And I know a lot of Yankee fans like to get on a train and go down to see the Yankees in the Baltimore Orioles. Then a couple of off days, the 26th and 27th, before going to the Minnesota to play Rod Crew and the Minnesota Twins, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, August 28th, 29th, and 30th. Well, the Yankees take the field, and they're led by second baseman Willie Randolph. Figueroa walking in with Art Fowler, the pitching coach from the Yankee bullpen on center field. And right now, Bob Shepard announcing the playing and the singing of the National Anthem. with the start of this afternoon's ball game. The Yankees and the White Sox right after this. <laughs> Live in the studio, Lavaquist Radio Spot, take one. Team number one, Lavaquist Radio Spot. Lavaquist Radio Spot. Mr. Director. Ah, yes, Mr. Lavaquist. I'm not crazy about this island thing, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Director. Uh, see, rough and rugged is what my shaving cream is really all okay, about. I'll change it. Take two. Fine. Fine. Oh, I shouldn't be a bob right now. But Lavaquist is so continental and stuff. Could the announcer? I'll uh, change it. Take three. Yeah. You know, what? If he could use the sexy old voice. Sexy, Harry. Take four. Yes, wonderful. Hope I didn't make too many suggestions. Not at all. Could I make a suggestion? What is it? Could he do it in Swedish with an Irish program? I'm Jeff Clark. To learn how radio can sell for you, call 449-1460, WOKO. Well, we regret to inform you who have not heard that former Yankee great Joe Gordon died yesterday in Sacramento, California. Joe was 63 years old. He played second base for the Yankees and the Cleveland Indians for 11 seasons. Had a lifetime batting average of just under 270 with 253 home runs. Played six of those 11 years with the Yankees before being traded to Cleveland for Allie Reynolds back in 1947. Joe Gordon. 
Ed Figueroa has finished warming up. Cliff Johnson whips the ball down to second base. Clutch now gives it to Ed Figueroa. And this ball game is just about ready to get underway. Yankees so far this year have won two of the first six games played. Same position they were in last year, winning just two of their first eight. But at the end of six, they were two and four. And stepping in for the White Sox against Figueroa, the roadrunner, a left-handed batter, Ralph Gar. And the ball game is underway. And the first pitch is bounced to shortstop. Right there is Bucky Dent, long throw the first in time, and Gar's out. So Gar, first ball hitting, bounces out 6-3, to three, and that'll bring on Chet Lemon, the center fielder. If it's reachable, Gar will swing at it. Lemon's having a fine early season with the White Sox. He's been up 19 times, nine base hits, two home, uh, no home runs, two runs batted in. Lemon is a right-handed batter. And moving on deck is George Orta, the second baseman. Yankees play Lemon straight away. First pitch is down low, ball one. Clutch playing third. Dent playing shortstop. Randolph at second base and channel at the first. Figueroa's 1-0 pitch. Swung on, top to third. Clutch has the ball, bobbles it, and can't find the handle. Lemon is safe. Should be an error on Mickey Clutch at third base. We'll wait on a scoring ruling. Anyway, that'll bring on George Orta. Orta's a left-handed batter. Excellent hitter. He's been up 25 times, 10 base hits, three home runs, five runs batted in for the White Sox. And on deck is Bobby Bond. Lemon off first, he's checked by Figueroa, and the pitcher, he goes, swung on and missed, and Johnson, nope, fouled off. Orta swung at the ball, fouled it off, and it was got by Johnson, so Lemon will have to go back. And they give uh, Clutch an error on that ball, but he bobbled off the bat of Lemon, E5. So Lemon now dusts himself off and walks slowly back to first base. They count no balls and a strike on George Orta. White Sox coming out quickly and being aggressive on a base pass. Now Figueroa set. Checks Lemon. Throws the first base and Lemon is back. Yankees set up straight away in the outfield. Roy White and left. Rivers in center. That's Mickey Rivers. And the right fielder, Reggie Jackson. Figueroa goes the first again and they've got him picked off. Campbell is chasing towards second and tag. No, he throws to the shortstop bucket. Then who makes the tag? Chambliss really chasing Chet Lemon towards second base. Now, tagged at him and missed him. But then threw the ball to Bucky Zett. And he had Lemon going uh, too fast towards second. He couldn't retrace his set. And uh, Zett made the tag. So the put out, one, three, six. And they're two out. Oh, two outs, nobody on. Now the count, one strike on George Orta. Figueroa's pitch. Breaking ball is inside. It's one and one. Here's the one-one delivery to Orta. Misses low and away. It's two balls and a strike. Figueroa working quickly. The two-one pitch. Hit in the air to left center. Mickey Rivers after it. Still going. White's over there now. And White makes the catch in front of Rivers. And the side is retired. Uh, no runs, no hits, one error, nobody left on base. At the end of one half inning of play, the White Sox nothing, the Yankees are coming up. The Hoos Tobacco Company has more to offer than the name employees. They carry one of the largest inventories of all the new products in the Tri-City area. Southern and black and white TVs, table models, and console stereos, and video cassette recorders. All TVs are delivered free of charge within the Tri-City area by servicemen who adjust each set specifically to your location. The host of Acre Company has its own service department on the premises and they, therefore, personally guarantee and personally stand behind each and every Zenith product they sell. Color portable TVs in 13, 17, 19, 23, and 25-inch diagonal and color consoles in 23 and 25-inch diagonal available in modern and meditating styles. All available are like Cajos Tobacco Company's everyday low prices. Stop in and check it out. Cajos Tobacco Company, centrally located in downtown Cajos at 60 Lincoln Street. 
Open Tuesday and Friday from 9, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday from 5.30. Close Sunday and Monday. The order also is in the name and fly for a whole tobacco company. We will not let you see if you have anything. Call us to me and say the world will be open. Take the world will be open. Please call us to me. Those words in the world will be open to us. Please, tell me what you owe me. We think no matter what you have to say, no matter what you have to say, it's a little bit more to the telephone room. We'll let you in the group. So the next time you want to get out, you'll call Western Union. That's Western Union. Well, I'm going to let you in. Well, I'm going to let you in. Well, Francisco, Bob, it's a hard-throwing right-hander warming up for the White Sox. We're getting ready to play the bottom half of the first inning here at Yankee Stadium. No score in the ball game. The Yankees will send in Willie Randolph, Mickey Rivers, and then the designated hitter, Jim Spencer, against Barrios. Barrios born in Hermosillo, Mexico. He's 6'3", goes 195 pounds. Made three starts against the Yankees last year. Didn't lose to the Yankees. He won two, and he lost none. Let's take five seconds now for station identification. You're listening to New York Yankee Baseball on 1460 WOKO Albany. Willie Randolph getting ready to step in against Francisco Barrios here in the bottom half of the first inning. Yankees won their opener here against the White Sox. 4-2 behind Ron Guidry as Guidry picks up his first one of the year on a Thursday. The Yankees the White Sox off yesterday resuming the three-game series here this afternoon and playing the final game tomorrow afternoon here at Yankee Stadium. Dick Sidrow against Ken Kravick. Oh, Willie Randolph in. And the first pitch to Willie is swung on and missed. Randolph has at least one base hit in all six Yankee games. He's batting 320 on the year. Set up 25 times, eight base hits. Fast ball is high, it's one and one. Willie has one of four Yankee home runs hit this year. And he and Jackson share the RBI lead on the club of four. 1-1 one, one pitch. Breaking ball as low as two balls in a strike. Barrio slots and deals a 2-1 pitch. Swung on, popped straight back over our heads and out of play. It's two balls, two strikes on Willie Randolph. Barrios gets a new ball. Looks in at fourth start. Wayne Nordhagen, the catcher, and the 2-2 pitch. Swung on, hit in the air to the right side. Coming on is Bobby Bonds, going back as order. Bonds, the right fielder calling, and makes the catch. There's one away. That'll bring on Mickey Rivers, the Yankee center fielder. Rivers had a great spring for the Yankees, and it has carried over into the season. He's been up 21 times with seven base hits. No home runs, two runs batted in. And the Sox not short enough, both in the infield and the outfield for Rivers. And Mickey takes a strike on the inside corner at the knees. No balls, one strike. Eric Soderholm way in on the grass at third base. As your one pitch comes on. Swung on, hit in the air, foul off the third base side. Side home over there, near the stand, makes the catch, two out. Rivers fouling out the third baseman, Eric Sauter home. Bringing on Jim Spencer, the designated hitter. Spencer's been up five times, one base hit. That was a home run in Milwaukee. And he has a run batted in. Spencer, a left-handed batter. Last year was with the White Sox, purchased by the Yankees over the winter. Infield playing Spencer to four with a shortstop, Don Kessinger, almost behind second base. Breaking ball is a called strike on Spencer. Florida playing him in the hole at second base, and the first base from Lamar Johnson guarding the line. Barrio says like the first side. Now he gets what he likes. Breaking ball is full of first base. Right there is Lamar Johnson. The White Sox had Spencer played perfectly. Johnson tags up at first base, and the side is retired. Three up, three down. At the end of one, the score 
The Yankees, nothing. The White Sox, nothing. in a scoreless ball game. The White Sox batting against Ed Figueroa. They'll send in Bobby Bonds, Lamar Johnson, and Ron Bloomberg. Just looking at this new Yankee scorebook. Actually, the yearbook, the 1978 yearbook with a special 20-page insert. The bar of the Yankees championship season and an added bonus, Yankee baseball card, the six-page pull-out section. Not too bad a book for a couple of bucks. You can buy him right here at the stadium. Bobby Bonds after Figueroa. Figueroa misses with a curveball outside, ball one. Bonds, a right-handed batter. They're playing straight away. Five for 20 so far. It's one in the air, straightaway center. Rivers to his left, backing up a bit now. He's there, makes the catch, and there's one away. That'll bring on Lamar Johnson, the big first baseman for the White Sox. Johnson off to a slow start. He has one base hit in 14 times at bat. Normally hits well against Yankee pitching. A right-handed batter hits right center, left center. Doesn't pull the ball too often. Boston leading Texas 2-0. That game in the second inning. The Red Sox 2, the Rangers nothing. Johnson takes the fastball, a called strike. Bobby Canop coaching third base for the White Sox, and Minnie Mignoso coaching at first. Fastball is a called strike, two on Johnson. Just got the outside corner. No balls and two strikes. On deck, the boomer, Ron Bloomberg. He's making his first official at bat against his former mate. Here's a two strike pitch to Johnson. Just missed outside, one ball, two strikes. Boomer played against the Yankees in spring training when the Yankees hosted the White Sox. Sox coming over from Sarasota, Florida. One-two pitch. Breaking ball is no, it's two balls, two strikes. Figueroa now looks over his right shoulder, checks the scoreboard, and also Rivers in center field. Now the 2-2 delivery. Swung on, hit the center field. Rivers on the run, still coming, and he can't get to it. Base hit. Knocks the ball down, throws the ball back in, and holding at first base is Lamar Johnson. That's the first base hit of the ball game. But Johnson singling the center field. He's on at first base with one away, and that'll bring on Ron Bloomberg. The Boomers so far this year, He's only been up five times. Now he's been up 16 times with two base hits. Both those base hits home runs. And three runs batted in. As Figueroa sets the deal to Bloomberg. Runners going, pitches line. Jack can't get to a base hit. Johnson around second going to third. And they're going to hold him at third base. And Bloomberg will hold it first. So on the hit and run, Bucky Dent moving to cover the bag. Ball was hit to his right, leap for the ball, could not get it. Johnson went on the third base, and the Boomers on it first for the White Sox. Threatening the score here in the top of the second. Runners at first and third, one out, and the batter is Eric Soderholm, the third baseman. Perfect hit and run. 
Yankees will keep their infield back, looking for two, except for Chandler. He'll hold Bloomberg at first base. Milwaukee playing at Baltimore that game in the second inning, no score. In the fourth inning, Detroit and Toronto, no score. Here's the pitch to Soderholm. Low one inside, ball one. Top of the second. White Sox runners at first and third. One away, no score in the ball game yet. Now Figgy is at the belt. And the 1-0 pitch. Almost hit him inside. Ball tailed in on Soderholm. It's two balls and no strikes. Wind blowing toward right here at the stadium. Any ball hit to left to left center should be held up. Now time is called. Soder home. Lucky wants a brush to kick the dirt out of his spikes. Throws over to the White Sox dugout on the third base side. Barnes led this inning off for the White Sox, flying to Rivers in center field, and Lamar Johnson dropped a single in front of Rivers in the center field. And on a hit and run, Ron Bloomberg single, the line single over Dent's head into left center, sending Josh in the third base, the boomer holding it first. And now Soderholm back in the batter spot. So the count, two balls, those strikes. And the pitch. Swung it up the middle, Bucky Dent to his left, he's got it. Randolph one, back to first, double play. Good play by the Yankee infield. Six, four, three, and they get out of the inning. No run, two base hits. One man left. At the end of one and a half, the Yankees nothing, the White Sox nothing. Jackson leading off here in the bottom of the second against Francisco Barrios. It was Jackson's first home run of the year Thursday against Wilbur Wood. On that ball game for the Yankees, 4-2. Jackson takes outside, ball one. Bucky Dent got the other run in with a sacrifice fly. Saddling Wilbur Wood with his second loss of the year. Breaking ball is swung on and missed by Jackson. It's one and one. Jackson's been up 24 times, seven base hits, one home run, four runs batted in. Three of those seven base hits double. Here's a 1-1 delivery to Jackson. Line, one hopper to order at second base. Throws on to Johnson. They've got Jackson. One away. Here's Chambliss. Chambliss had a good swing. He's also having a good season. 24 times up, eight base hits, three runs batted in. A left-handed hitter. Fastball too high, ball one. On deck, the switch hitting Roy White. The one ball, no strike pitch is inside. Two balls and no strikes. Two-o pitch. 
Bounce to second base. Florida charges. Has a nice hop. Flips over to first base. Two down. Two up, two down, bottom of the second, bringing on Roy White. Well, Texas picks up a run in the top of the second. At the end of one and a half now, it's Boston two, the Rangers one. The Red Sox got there two runs in the first inning. A two, two run home run by Jim Rice, his third home run of the year. The youngster picking up where he left off last year. As White takes outside, ball one. No walk in Baltimore, no school there at the end of one and a half. Jerry Augustine for the Brewers and Jim Palmer for the Baltimore Orioles. 1 0 to White. Swung on one hopper to the first base and bobbles it to fix it up. Underhand toss to Barrios covering, and, and the side is retired. Three up, three down for the Yankees in the bottom of the second. At the end of two, the score. The Yankees nothing, the White Sox nothing. Just tries to lay the bat on the ball. 
White over there the line and left and playing shallow, and Rivers playing in left center. Jackson playing in shallow and playing right center. One-two pitch to Kessinger. Breaking ball is high, two and two. Kessinger hit the ball well for the White Sox so far. He's six for 19. Two-two pitch. Misses outside, and the count is full. Three balls and two strikes. On deck is Wayne Nordhagen, the catcher. Payoff pitch to Kessinger. Fastball is bounced to second. Randolph is right there, digging it out, slipping to first. It's one away. Let's take 20 seconds now for our local stations to identify themselves. And now for the Mohawks. Stirs up the Knights on WOKO. <laughs> Charlie! Charlie Huddle from 11.30 till dawn on 1460 WOKO, Albany. The right-handed hitting Wayne Nordhagen and against Ed Vigoro. First pitch is outside, ball one. Vigoro working quickly. A fastball tails up and in. It's two balls, no strikes. Playing the third inning, no score. The White Sox, no runs on two base hits. The Yankees still looking for their first base hit against the Francisco Barrio. White Sox threatened in the second inning. They had runners at first and third and only one out. Soderholm bounced into a double play. Started out behind second base by Bucky Dent. Fastball is bounced up the middle. That'll go through. Base hit. Rivers gets the ball back in, and the White Sox have picked up their third hit of the ball game. Nordhagen at first base. And the batter now is Ralph Zarr, the left fielder. Home plate umpire Terry Cooney wants to look at that baseball and exchanges baseballs with Ed Figueroa. Evidently, Figueroa wanted a new ball. The batter now is Ralph Zarr, the road runner. He's been up once and dead threw him out, leading the ball game off. Zarr is the left handed batter. It's from extremely close stand. Very active bat. Swings at just about anything. Pitch to guard. Taken low and outside, ball one. Clutched and close to third base, just on the cut of the infield grass. The 1 0 to guard. Takes a strike. Breaking ball. It's 1 and 1. Gar backs off just about every pitch, but he stands so close to the plate that when he backs off, he still can control the plate. And he stands up toward the pitcher as Figueroa is at the belt. The 1-1 pitch. Line to right field. Jackson coming on and makes up. The ball comes out. Lord Hagen starts the third, and he's going to make it there. The throw is cut off by Jet. Reggie Jackson came in on a sinking line drive, goes for the ball, and in the glove and bounced out. Nordhagen started to stop at second base. The third base coach Bobby Knopf waved him on, and he made it safely over there. So the White Sox once again have runners at first and third. With one away, and the batter will be Chet Lemon. Lemon got on on an error by third baseman Mickey Klutz in the first inning. Well, Figueroa once again, I try to keep that ball down to possibly get the DP. Gar has good speed, so does Lemon. Runners lead off first and third. Throw the first base and Gar's back. Figueroa now taking a little more time. Checks the runner. Pitch to Lemon. Fastball top to short. Might be two. Dent the up. The Randolph for one, back to first, not in time. Dent had trouble getting the ball out of the glove. Good DP ball. Bucky Dent had a lot of trouble getting the ball out of the glove. Flipped over to Randolph, and Randolph throw back to first was not in time. Nordhagen scores, and the White Sox lead one to nothing. So they just get the force at second base, six to four. Lemon now with good speeds on at first base, and the batter is George Orta, the second baseman. Also give Lemon a run bat it is.
Florida has been up one slide to Rivers in center field. And takes a fastball right in there. It's all struck. Figueroa is at the belt. Throws the first base and Lemon gets back. White Sox have stolen three bases so far this year. They've also been caught three times. Pitch to order. Swung on. Popped up behind the plate. Johnson throws the mask away. He's coming back near the screen. And can't get to it. Ball hit on top of the railing and bounced into the seat. So the count. No balls and two strikes on George Order. Now, Bud Thompson has just hit a three-run homer for the Red Sox in the bottom of the uh, second inning. And Fergie Jenkins, a former Red Sox pitcher, is in now pitching for the Rangers. So that means Boston's leading the Texas at least 5-1, and the Red Sox still batting in the bottom half of the second inning. It was Thompson's second home run of the year earlier in the first inning. Jim Rice hit his third with one on. Tigers now leading Toronto one to nothing. Don't say it. Chad Lemon. Two out. Figueroa checks Lemon. He's not going. The pitch too high. Fastball. Two balls. Two strikes. On deck, Robert Bond. Bobby. Now Figgy's at the belt. Runner's going. The pitch is fouled off into the third base dugout and out of the third base dugout of the White Sox. Two balls, two strikes still, and Lemon will have to go back. Yankees pick Lemon off first base in the first inning. He got on on an error by Clutch. And Figueroa caught him leaning towards second and picked him off. Campbell tried to run him down. Couldn't do that. Threw it to Denton. Denton made the tag. Now the 2 2. Swung on and missed. Order goes down, swinging on the side as retired. The White Sox pick up a run on two hits. They leave a base runner. Through two and a half to score. The White Sox won the Yankees. Nothing. <laughs> and Cliff Johnson will lead off against Francisco Barrio. It'll be Johnson, Bucky Dent, and then Mickey Clutch against the right-hander. The National League, Mets 2, Montreal nothing through 3. Phillies 1, Cardinals nothing through 3. Pittsburgh 2, Chicago 1 through 2. First pitch to Johnson. Curve ball, down low, ball 1. The 1-0 to Johnson, fouled back to the screen. It's one ball and one strike. 
Some of the guests on Yankee broadcast receive son of a gun. Clorol's little red 1,250-watt hair dryer. Separate controls for heat and airflow. Six different settings from hot to cool. Others get the home century smoke alarm from General Electric. Bouncer inside the third baseline. Base hit. Johnson around first. Going towards second. A throw there. It's going to be close. And he's out. Ball bounced out nicely for guard. He threw a strike into George Orta. And Dodge is out trying to stretch a single into a double. Yankees pick up their first base hit. But good throw. Orta slapping the tag on the throw from guard. One away. Put out 7-4. Here's Bucky Dent, the shortstop. Barrios with the first pitch to Dent. Too high, ball one. With Johnson's second base hit, he's now two for 15. Bucky Dent, seven for 19. It's this one in the air, shallow left, near the line, coming on guard. Going back, Kessinger. Kessinger, the shortstop, makes the catch near the line and shallow left, and they're two out. Oh, two outs, nobody on the batter, Mickey Clutch. Plus batting for the first time this year, replacing Greg Nettles. Both Nettles and Munson have picked up injuries. As Plus spins out of the way of a fastball inside. Here's the one ball, no strike pitch to Clutch, almost hit, and it does hit him inside. Mario's working inside on Clutch, hits him. We'll take five now for station identification. You're listening to New York Yankee Baseball on 1460 WOKO Albany. So, Mickey Clutch gets hit by a fastball, tailing inside. He's on at first base and with two outs. The batter is Willie Randolph. Randolph has been up once and skied to Bonds in right field. Slider outside, ball one. The White Sox to run on four hits. The Yankees, no runs on one. Playing the bottom half of the third inning with the runner at first base and two outs. Willie pops this one up to the right side. George Orta under it and makes the catch for out number three. No runs, a base hit, and the man left. Through three, it's a score. The Chicago White Sox won, the New York Yankees nothing. Wherever you may roam, you'll find our name is known. You can trust the Delco. Hey, Delco. The Delco fleet of battery is truly maintenance free. It never needs water, so the power is sealed in. Get freedom. You'll say, thanks, Delco. You're welcome. They've got stuff. When the cycle's up, you can trust the Delco. Thanks, Delco. Delco freedom battery. Delco, thanks, Delco. Last night when I was making the scene and reading my favorite hot rod magazine, now Firestone was giving away free three fours that are dumped in the street. And that number one hand machine. Oh, it's the same. A four by four that's really more. A mini pickup. It makes my heart go giddy off the Dirty little machine. Hey, what a thing. Hey, can you believe it? Three ultimate customized machines. A van, mini courier, and four by four pickup. All done up by Hot Rod Magazine. And Firestone giving away free. Along with 30 super mini vans. Nothing to buy. Just be sure you're a licensed driver. And enter by May 31st. Void were prohibited. It's super. Believe it. The Firestone. Firestone Super Zone Tweet Day. All you gotta do to enter is run to Firestone Tire Center. Firestone Super Zone Tweet Day. Stop in tomorrow at your local Firestone Tire and Auto Center and register. Well, through three here at Yankee Stadium, the White Sox have a run on four hits. The Yankees no runs on one. And here to take you over the next three innings, just back from the hospital, <laughs> the scooter, Bill Rizzuto. That's nothing to laugh about, Bill. I hate hospitals. A man in my condition, normal man, would be in a hospital yet, but I know duty calls, and so that's why I'm here behind the microphone. The show must go on. 
And right now, leading off, Bobby Bonds. Lines one to right center. That's a base hit. They're going to have to hurry. Bonds likes to run. Jackson up. Fires it in. And Bobby's on with a single to right center field. And now Figueroa has his work cut out for him. Lamar Johnson who lined a single to center the batter. White Sox leading 1-0 here in the top of the fourth. Go to first. Bonds just does beat the tag by Campbell. Figueroa sets again. Another throw to first, and Bonds jumps back. Bonds has stolen one base and been caught one time so far this year. To the belt, the pitch is fouled out of play. Off the upper deck down below. Cliff Johnson out talking to Ed Figueroa. On deck, Ronnie Bloomberg. Beautiful spring day here at Yankee Stadium. Sun shining brightly, breezes blowing. They got him, they got him, yes, sir! Figueroa has just picked his second man. Biggie must have been working on that move. Bonds, like Lemon, was leaning towards second base, and Figgy threw over there and they picked him off. Boy, what a way to help yourself out. Twice he's done it. And now, one strike on Lamar Johnson, and the curve is high, one and one. Bigger all lines. Check swing, but it's over. One ball, two strikes. And Boucher must have lost that Florida blood condition. Usually people from Florida are very chilly this time of the year. I got a big coat on. She does There's a big hit line to left field on a high slider. We're all right up with it, so that was a big play, picking Bonds off first base. That is the sixth base hit for the Chicago White Sox, and here's Ronnie Bloomberg, who has one of those six base hits. A line single to left center field. Ronnie has always been an excellent hitter. He's been injury prone. Johnson leads off first. Hits to Bloomberg. Is line to right center field. Rivers digging and catches up. Makes the play. Throw to first. Not quite in time. Good throw by Rivers. But Bloomberg again getting good wood on that ball. A line shot to right center. Two men are out. Strange what a difference a day makes and also what a team makes. Figueroa down in Texas was invincible. Here they are really tattooing that baseball. Even the outs are tough out. Eric Sonahorn bounced into a double play in the second inning. Two men out. And the curve breaks low ball one. On deck, Don Kessinger. Johnson leading away. The kick and the pitch is inside. Two balls, no strike. Figueroa sets again. And delivers a bounce to the short. Dead up over to Randolph for the out. No runs, two hits, no errors, a man left. At the end of three and a half, White Sox one and the Yankees nothing. Cajon's Tobacco Company has Ward on for the name and prize. They carry one of the largest inventories of all Zenith products in the Tri-City area. Color in black and white TVs, table models and console stereos and video cassette recorders. All CDs are delivered free of charge within the Tri-City area by servicemen who adjust each set specific meeting or location. 
to those who act in company has its own service department on the premises and may therefore personally guarantee and personally stand behind each and every Zenith product they sell. Nine inch diagonal black and white, battery operated and portable black and white 12 and 19 inch diagonal TVs, portable stereo with AM, FM stereo radio, record player and cassette and retract tape with play and record. All available at Cahoe's Tobacco Company's everyday low prices. Stop in, check it out. Cahoe's Tobacco Company, centrally located in downtown Cahoe's at 60 Rumson Street. Open Tuesday and Friday to 9, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday from 5.30. Then this is Sunday and Monday. More to offer for the name and prize, Cahoe's Tobacco Company. Let's take your contact. Take You've got a nighttime cold. Congestion is keeping you awake. You didn't take contact, did you? We're so famous for all day relief, you didn't think of us for nighttime. Wrong. Well, our 12 hour contact capsule decongests all night long so you can get the rest and sleep to me. And sleep's a great deal. Take over your drink. And Mickey Rivers will lead it off. Mickey fouled out the third base his first time up. Yankees trail 1-0. And the pitch to Mickey bounced to second. Up with it, Orta. Over to first, and they got him. And they were playing very shallow for Mickey Rivers, the whole infield. One away, that'll bring up Jim Spencer, who bounced to first base his first time up. Now the outfield and the infield swings around towards right on the left-hand hitting Spencer, who loves to hit at Yankee Stadium. The pitch is over. Strike one call. Yeah, they are hearing us down at WDAE in Tampa, Florida. That's home base for Pam Boucher. Used to do a show down there. Several shows. Low curve hit deep to right field. Way back. Bond's going back. Back. He can't get it. Oh, Jim Spencer, we told you he loves to hit here. And he cream one. A home run for Jim Spencer. A Getty round tripper. And for his Getty round tripper, Jim Spencer receives Getty gift certificates. Good for the purchase of Getty Premium. The gasoline that, according to a recent survey, sells from two to two and a half cents less per gallon than most of the major premiums. Getty's got what's best for your car. And the home run is just for the Yankees as they tie up the ball game 1-1. One, one. That's the second home run of the year for Spencer. And Reggie Jackson swings and misses strike one. That's only the second hit for the Yankees for Francisco Barrios. The right hand of Wines and the pitch high and outside. The letter we received from Tampa from Kenneth Quarter, the gentleman who saw opening day back in when the Highlanders were playing as the Yankees. How do you like that? Also attended Yankee Stadium. First game played there in 1923. The next pitch to Reggie, outside, three balls and a strike. We're all tied, 1-1 one, one here in the bottom of the fourth inning. One man out and nobody on. Reggie bounced to second his first time up. Barrios winds, the pitch, foul just below us. Three and two. Baseball thrown out to Barrios on deck. Chris Chambliss takes off one sign. Now he winds, and the pitch line foul just outside of third. Ball was away, and Reggie went with it and got good wood on it, but just foul. 
So he's still alive. Jackson hit a dramatic three-run homer in the first inning of the first game against Chicago to win the game. Curve check swing ground ball to kick foul. He curved them on three and two, and Reggie was lucky to get a piece of that one. There's a break in the action with the score. Yankees one on the White Sox one. This is not Allen. When you have to send the package down to the miners, you don't have to use a minor league air freight company. That's because Emory doesn't just go to major league cities. They also go to minor league cities. Emory, the Air Force in air freight. Hi, right, Reggie. Jackson still with the count three and two. Just fouls another pitch off. Hanging in there until he gets the pitch he likes. He's using that black Betsy bat now. The pitch again, foul again out of play. Sotterholm is going after it, and the wind no, doesn't quite bring it back. About four rows back in the seat down the left field line. So the plate umpire, Terry Cooney, needs a fresh supply of baseballs after Jackson fouled off five of them. Still three and two on Jackson. One out, nobody on. One one the score. Barrios winds the pitch. High drive to deep center field. Going back is Lemon back on the warning track and one hands it. Reggie just didn't get all of that one. But he was able to send Lemon back 400 feet to the warning track and right center before he pulled down his drive. Two men out. Now Chris Chambliss. Chambliss bounced to second his first time up. White Sox is going to be a tough team all year. Curve is just outside ball one. First ball low and inside, two and nothing. Wind really swirling around Yankee Stadium. Blowing the papers from the hot dogs. Around time to score now. There's a couple blow in front of Chambliss. Blowing around the infield and the outfield. The 2-0 pitch way outside. Ball three. Three and nothing. The 3-0 delivery. Strike call. Three and one. Gets the sign from Nordhagen. His 3 1 pitch. High ball four, and Chambliss is on. And that is the first walk in the ball game by either pitcher. It brings up Roy White, who bounced out to first base. And on deck, Cliff Johnson. Outfield straight away on Roy White. Barrios kicks, delivers it. Tie ball one. Barrios sets again. The curve is outside. Ball two. Barrios is not coming to a stop out there. Umpires used to call that. Come down, you had to come to a full one-second stop. He's ready again. And again, he pitches quickly. Swing and a miss. Two and one. Lamar Johnson playing in back at Chambliss at first. Here's the pitch. Bouncer off the end of his bat. Got a home up, goes to second just in time to get Chambliss. Fast the man would have beat that, but the Yankees pick up a run on one hit, no errors, and a man left. And at the end of four, it's the White Sox one and the Yankees one. Oh, 
Billy Phil, do you think Frank Messi deserves a butterfinger for doing such a great announcing job today? Well, Billy, he was good, but I don't know if he was that good. But Frank's a great sportscaster. He was sportscast of the year three times down in Virginia. Yeah, but you know butterfingers. Crispy layers of peanut butter, crunchy candy, a chocolatey covering. But Frank won all sorts of awards from AT and UPI. Yeah, but still, and if Frank were here, you'd have to broadcast the last three. Frank Messer has just earned his butterfinger. <laughs> Six innings of Tigers, three, Toronto, nothing. Billingham against Underwood. Aurelio Rodriguez got his first home of the year. It's the Red Sox six and Texas one at the end of three and a half. Ellis started, Ferguson Jenkins on. Lee going for the Red Sox. Jim Rice got his third of the year with one on. And Butch Hopson his second of the year with two on. Baltimore two, Milwaukee nothing end of four and a half. Augustine against Palmer. Palmer's first start of the year. Minnesota three, Seattle nothing end of three. Todd against Goats. California at Oakland, and Cleveland at Kansas City later on. In the National League, the Mets 2, Montreal nothing into 4, Swan against Twitchell. Cubs 3, Pirates 2, end of 3, Rooker against Lamp. Philadelphia 1, St. Louis 1 at the end of 3.5, Christensen against Denny. Cincinnati at Houston, Atlanta at L.A., and San Francisco at San Diego later on. Here it's the White Sox 1 and the Yankees 1 as we go into the fifth inning. Don Kessinger, bounce to second, will be the batter. Ed Figueroa delivers ground to the short. Bucky Dent right there. Short hops it, fires to first. One out. That'll bring up Wayne Nordhagen, who's single to center and scored in the third inning. Nordhagen spent nine years in the minor leagues. Now, that takes a lot of doing. Kids would become very discouraged long before that. Figuring they didn't have a chance to make the big leagues, but this young man hung around and now he's up. He takes the strike. Certainly another asset for this young man. Normally an outfielder, he has learned how to catch and he is catching today. He caught a little bit in spring training and catches are at a premium. A one strike pitch, low and away, one and one. Ralph Gar on deck. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Bouncer in the hole. Grabbed by Clutch. Fires the first. They got him. That looked like Greg Nettles out there. And Clutch pounds his fist into his glove. The first chance Mickey had, he booted. And that always gets an infielder upset. But he made a fine play going far to his left on a hard hit ground ball. So we'll give Mickey Clutch a star on that one. For Nettles, it would have been an ordinary play. Ralph Gar has bounced the short and single the right field. He helped build that run in the third inning. Batting 375. Left-hand batter, closed stance, right foot almost on home plate. Takes the pitch down, low ball one. Got a jacket on now, huh, Sam? The 1-0 pitch, strike call, one on one One ball, one strike, two out. Figueroa looking around at his defense. He counted seven men behind him and one in front of him. The one-one pitch. He bunched down fair, but it's foul. That would have been a base hit had he kept it fair, and Gar is shaking his head. A ball and two strikes. Chet Lemon on deck. We're in the top of the fifth. Two out, all tied, 1-1. One, one. Figueroa looks in for the sign. Now he's ready. And the pitch is bounced off. Figueroa 
off balance would have been an easy out. It went directly over the mound. But Piggy falls towards first base as he delivers. And what should have been an easy out turns into a base hit for Gar, his second of the ball game. A bouncer right up the middle. That's base hit number seven. For the White Sox, and here's Chet Lemon, who reached on an error and uh, bounced into a fourth play to get credit for the one RBI the White Sox have. And now we'll keep an eye on Gar. They've been trying to run on Cliff Johnson. Figueroa has picked two men off. He picked off Lemon in the first, and he picked off Bobby Bonds in the fourth. The pitch to Lemon foul. That'll be out of play over the Yankee dugout and back into the crowd. George Orta on deck. Figueroa rubbing up the new baseball. Decides he doesn't like the feel of it. So Terry Cooney will flip him another one. Figueroa looks at that one. Still doesn't like it. Gets still another one. Bernie Cabo has just homed in the fourth inning for the Red Sox. And Toronto picked up three runs in the bottom of the sixth to tie up the Tigers. But the Red Sox are back home, and you might know it. With all those home runs, the wind must be blowing out of Fenway. All right, Figueroa gets the ball. He likes the feel of Goes to first. Gar is back. Gar does not have a big lead, but he's fast. Biggie sets. The pitch, he bunts down third, but foul. They're really trying out Clutch and Cliff Johnson. Both one attempts going foul. And it's 0-2 on Chet Lemon. Chandler is holding the bag against Ralph Gar. And if Ralph is going to try and steal, this would have to be the pitch. Bigger or set. He doesn't go, and the ball is fouled back upstairs and out of play. Very sad day for Yankee fans and Joe Gordon fans, especially Flash Gordon. I broke in with as a second baseman. Joe was an established veteran when I came to the Yankees in 1941. He passed away yesterday from a heart attack. One loving guy, always had a smile on his face, and what a ball player. Now the two-strike pitch. Gar is going hit deep to right of it. Stays fair. That's a home run. And it's just fouled by inches. Holy cow. How that missed the foul ball, I'll never know. A high fly ball and the wind, fortunately blowing towards right, carried that ball just far. 310 feet down the right field line. The big yellow pole down there. Almost scraped some paint off it, but it just barely missed. Gar was running on that pitch. Figueroa sets again. He doesn't go, and the curve is a little bit low. One ball, two strikes. Figueroa steps off the mound, blows on his pitching hand. Now back on the rubber. Comes down to the belt. Throw to first, but Gar is back. Figueroa pitches from the extreme corner of the rubber with a runner on. A lot of pitches pitch from the middle of the pitching rubber. Here's the stretch. Fastball swing and a missed strike three. No runs, the base hit, no errors, a man left. At the end of four and a half, the White Sox won and the Yankees nothing. Rather one. Sparky Lyle saves another one for the Yankees. Cliff Johnson's home run wins it in the ninth. Paul Blair makes another great catch in center field. Sparky Lyle, Cliff Johnson, and Paul Blair. Great subs on the world champion New York Yankees. In the capital district, the great subs come from Big Don Subs. The prices that will make you feel like a champion. Listen to this lineup. Big Don's hot Italian sausage, pepperoni, or the only long, hot meatball sub in town. All in all, Big Don's has over 30 varieties of hot and cold subs. Big Don's veal and peppers is a grand slam of a meal. It comes complete with Big Don's own special wine sauce. Big Don's is not only in first place, he's every place. With eight convenient locations in Albany, Latham, 
Waterman, Troy, Westman, and Manson. So when it comes to subs, the Yankees have Lyle, Johnson, Blair, and you've got big guns. Step up to big guns. You'll never strike out. I want that sinus medicine when I told it. You know, it relieves headache and congestion, internal sinus pressure, and post-nasal drip. And it has added strength. You mean added strength. So you know. Exactly. Added strength so much that it's taking pure aspirin for 50% more sinus drain. It helps sinus pain while you drain. Right. And more sinus drain for post-nasal drip. Added strength, so you The sinus medicine is not like box. Take one of these all the time. S-I-N-E-O-S-S. So you Right now, five seconds for station identification. You're listening to New York Yankee Baseball on 1460 WOKO Albany. Cliff Johnson leads off for the Yankees, and a sidearm curve sends Cliff on his back, ball one. And Cliff is sitting there contemplating whether to get mad. So he gets up and glares at Francisco Barrios, taking plenty of time to get his composure back. Barrios came by the way of third base that time, and the curve hung inside, and Cliff had to hit the dirt. Johnson's single to left was out trying to stretch it into a double. And now Cliff wants to ask time and come back. Let's see. Wants a towel. Gets the towel, and he wants to say something to Billy Martin. He says something to Billy. Billy nods his head. One thing Billy does not want to do is lose Cliff Johnson today with Thurman Munson not feeling up to par. All right, Cliff, back in the batter's box. Barrios gets the sign, the 1-0 pitch. Hit off the end of the bat. It's a fair ball. Barrios up with it. Flip to Johnson for the out. That's Lamar Johnson. Cliff Johnson is out. He had taken a big cut, almost fell down. It's a foul ball. It hit him off the foot. Oh, a break for a big Cliff. Here comes Bob Lemon. Bucky Dent was in the batter's box ready to hit. 
But the first base umpire, Al Clark, said it hit him in the foot. The strange thing was that Cliff Johnson ran as though it did not hit him in the foot. So sometimes Cliff is a good actor, sometimes he's not. Bob Lemon really upset, and you can't blame him. Cliff Johnson gave no indication that the ball had hit him on the foot. So Cliff talking to Nordhagen down there. And Bob Lemon is going to lose an argument. Lemon is saying now, Clark, how come he ran if the ball hit him in the foot? Well, in just two weeks, Thursday night, April 27th, the Yankees will host the Mets in the 16th annual Mayor's Trophy game. Proceeds benefiting Sandlot Baseball in the metropolitan area. Remember, this game does not appear in your schedules. So don't forget the Yankees and the Mets, Thursday, April 27th at 8 p.m. here at the stadium. Tickets are now at sale at all regular Yankees and Mets ticket outlets. All right, Cliff Johnson gets a life. And the curve, he swings and misses, and the bat comes back almost to the screen. One ball, two strikes. Now Cliff wants the pine tar rag. Not too many other things can happen here in a time at bat. Unless Cliff hits a home run. He was fooled on that sidearm curveball. We've seen Cliff get base hits. Fooled on a pitch and throw the bat at the ball. One ball, two strikes. Now he's rubbing at his eyes again with the sleeve of his uniform shirt. Nobody out, nobody on. One, one to score, bottom of the fifth. Here's the one-two pitch. A curve hit high in the air to right center. Moving to his right, Bobby Bonds. And now Lemon comes to center field of one hands it. Bonds gets out of the way. And there's one out. So they finally got Cliff Johnson out of there. And about a Bucky Dent who popped to short. Bucky batting 350 on the air. Got his double shin guard on. One part of it protects the knee, the other the shin. This one high in the air to left field, but Ralph Gar is right there, settling under it and makes the catch for the second out. And that'll bring up Mickey Clutch. Mickey was hit with a pitch ball his first time up. Greg Nettles also a little bit under the weather. On deck, Willie Randolph. Pitch to Mickey, high and outside, ball one. Two out, nobody on. Strike call, one on one. They play clutch straight away. Curb swing and a foul. One ball, two strikes. The Orioles have scored five in the bottom of the fifth. And are now leading uh, Milwaukee seven to nothing at the end of five. Milwaukee's bubble has burst a little bit after winning their first five. They hit up the middle for Mickey Clutch right by the glove of Barrios. So Mickey Clutch batting 1,000 on the year. One for one this season. No place to go but down after that base hit. And that's the third hit for the Yankees off Barrios. Here's Willie Randolph 0 for 2. Willie is fly to right and pops to second. Lamar Johnson holding first against Mickey Clutch. Barrios set, throws to first, but Clutch is back. Very shallow in right field is Bobby Bonds. Boy, he is really in that. Randolph can rip one by him. Pitch to Willie. High and tight, ball one. And Bobby came in a couple of more steps. Kind of surprising. Willie's got good power, and the wind is blowing towards right field. If he gets the ball away, Clutch could score all the way from first to pitch. He hits one to center field, though, high in the air. Chet Lemon drifting back. He'll one-hand it and does. For the Yankees, no runs are hit, no errors, a man left. And at the end of five, White Sox won and the Yankees won. It 
ready for the bargain at everybody's favorite garage sale, the fifth annual WOKO Garage Sale to Benefit Hotel. It's being held Sunday, May 7th, in the parking lot of Cast Furniture, 3 miles west of the only way on Central Avenue from 9 a.m. to 4. You know the garage sale's a great place to buy and sell your trash or treasures. A day into the fun entertainment by Rusty Howard of the Country Travelers. Sunday, May 7th, in the Cast Furniture parking lot, 3 miles west of the north way on Central Avenue. No dealers, please. We'll be looking for you at the fifth annual WOKO garage sale. George Otter leading off here in the top of the six fouls. The first pitch back off the screen. Strike one. Order has slid to left and struck out. Left hand batter. The so is pitch. Swing ground ball. Base hit in the hole. Randolph cannot get it. Reggie Jackson up with it. And Order, who has been swinging that ball, Gets the ground single to right field. The batter, Bobby Barnes. Bobby is fly to center and single to right center. Now, Order likes to run. Score is tied 1-1. One, one. That is the eighth base hit for the White Sox off Figueroa. Bobby Barnes. Open stance right down the end of the bat. Pitch to Barnes. Drive to right field. Long run for Jackson. The wind carrying. He's back on the warning track. One hands it. Sets himself and fires into second base. Reggie Jackson, a vastly improved outfielder this year. He worked very hard this spring. Reggie used to have a lot of problems with fly balls the early part of last year. But nobody hurt. Worked harder than Reggie this spring. And it's paying dividends. One out, and now Lamar Johnson, who has single twice, single to center and single to left. Order still at first with one out now. Stretched by Figueroa, and the pitch down low, ball one. Ronnie Bloomberg on deck. Figueroa checks the runner. His pitch foul back on the screen out of play. And they finally got one in the luxury box seats with the fishnet. They've been having a bad day up there. Listen to the crowd. Water leads again. Grounded to third. Clutch knocks it down. Up goes to Randolph one. Back to first. Double play. I tell you, Mickey Clutch showed me something staying in front of that ball. He didn't field it cleanly, but blocked it. And 5-4-3 double play. No runs are hit. No errors. Nobody left. At the end of five and a half, White Sox won and the Yankees won. Cahoos Tobacco Company has more to offer than the name implies. They carry one of the largest inventories of all unit products in the Tri-City area. Color and black and white TVs, TV models, and console stereos, and video cassette recorders. All TVs are delivered free of charge within the Tri-City area by servicemen who adjust each set specifically to your location. Cahoos Tobacco Company has its own service department on the premises. And they, therefore, personally guarantee and personally stand behind each and every Zenith product they sell. Color portable TVs in 13, 17, 19, 23, and 25 inch diagonal. And color consoles in 23 and 25 inch diagonal, available in modern and Mediterranean styles. All available at Cahoes Tobacco Company's everyday low prices. Stop in and check it out. Cahoes Tobacco Company, centrally located in downtown Cahoes at 60 Hudson Street. Open Tuesday and Friday to 9, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday to 5.30. Close Sunday and Monday. More to offer than the name implies, Cahoes Tobacco Company. Seven now, it's Detroit four, Toronto three, Rodriguez and LaFleur have homered. At the end of five, it's the Red Sox eight and the Texas Rangers three. A lot of home runs, Bavacqua and Oliver for Texas. And Rice, Hobson, and Carbo for the Red Sox. 
Baltimore 7, Milwaukee nothing, end of five and a half. Jim Palmer, his first start of the year. Seattle with five runs in the fifth, lead Minnesota 5-3. Mickey Rivers the batter, and Mickey takes the pitch outside. It's one and one. The Mets leading Montreal 2-0 at the end of five. Cubs 3, Pittsburgh 2 at the end of three. And the pitch to Rivers is low, ball 2-2-1. Two, two Philadelphia 2 and the Cardinals 1 at the end of five. That's all the action right now. Mickey has popped the third and bounced the second. We're all tied 1-1 one, one here in the bottom of the sixth. Foul just over our heads and out of play. Evens the count on Rivers. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out, nobody on. On deck, Jim Spencer. White Sox have one run on eight hits. The Yankees, one run on three hits. Barrios kicks, delivers a curve down low. It's three and two. Mickey Rivers already has three walks on the air, which is a lot for Mickey. The payoff pitch. Swing, bounce to the second order. Gets a nice hop, flips to first. Rivers is retired. And the White Sox breathe a sigh of relief when they can keep Rivers off the base. But here comes Jim Spencer, who has accounted for the lone Yankee run with his first home run as the Yankee. Over the right center field fence. First time up, Jim bounced hard to first base. Spencer batting 286 on the air. Jim, uh, as a visiting player, hit more home runs at Yankee Stadium than any other park he played in. And hit one to right center, but didn't get all of it. Bonds and look out, and Bonds cuts in front of Lemon to make the catch. Lemon had backed up on the ball, thought it was hit hard. Bonds saw it and cut in front. They almost had a collision, but Bonds held on to it. There are two outs. And now Reggie Jackson bounced to second and fly deep to center. Pitch to Reggie is a curve just outside ball one. Two out, nobody on. All tied at one here in the bottom of the sixth. Curve low, ball two, two, nothing. Bill Robinson has just hit a grand slammer for the Pirates. And he is red hot again. The 2 0 pitch to Reggie. Hopped it up. Third baseman shot home calling for it. And makes the catch in fair territory. So the Yankees retired in order. And at the end of six, the White Sox won and the Yankees won. Today's game is brought to you in part by Specs, makers of fine athletic shoes for tennis, basketball, jogging, or just running around. Specs shoes are designed to make your feet work a little faster than your competition. Whether your game is basketball, tennis, running, or just hanging around looking terrific, look for Specs at over 600 fine stores in and around New York. Smart New Yorkers already have. They know that when you step into your specs, you're ready to step out. Spec athletic shoes for all sports. Designated hitter for the White Sox will lead off. 
Well, it's very, very happy. Good afternoon, everybody, wherever you might be listening to New York Yankee baseball. Whether it be Maine, Vermont, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Central Mania, Florida, or points in between. How many more states do I need there? That covered? No? Rhode Island? Yes. Connecticut? Bloomberg, left hand by... Oh! Figueroa threw one about five feet over Bloomberg's head, came all the way to the backstop on the fly. And now the plate umpire will walk out and say something to Figueroa. Billy Martin comes out. Cliff Johnson, of course, was low-bridged by Barrios, and I guess they figure everything's even up now. There's a break in the action with the score. The Yankees won and the White Sox won. This is Mel Allen. You know, they say nobody can carry Willie Randolph's glove. Well, Emery's flight pack can probably carry his glove and Metal's glove and Paul Blair's, too. And that's because, unlike a lot of other small package services, the Emery flight pack takes up to five pounds. Emery, the Air Force and Air Freight. I have to feel that Figueroa has been warned by the plate umpire. Jerry Cooney and Billy Martin went out to protect his pitcher. And the pitch is high to Bloomberg. Two balls and no strikes. Now Cooney walks over toward the White Sox dugout, calls Bob Levin out, and he's going to tell Levin that uh, that should end it. Bloomberg in the game has had one hit in two trips. Well, never a conference goes on on the field. All we can do upstairs here is surmise, but I know we have to tell you something, and that would be our feeling that Mr. Cooney has told both managers no more. Bloomberg takes ball three high. Three balls and no strikes. Score side, one to one. White Sox at eight hits. The Yankees have three. Figueroa's pitch, a strike call. Bloomberg takes. Bloomberg single the left field on a hit and run back in the second inning. Then he flied to center field in the fourth. 3 1 deal. Swung on, hit in the air to center field. Rivers starts back, now comes in into his right, makes the catch, and there's one away. And now 20 seconds for our local stations to identify themselves. The fifth annual WOKO garage sale, the Benefit Hope House, will be held Sunday, May 7th, in the parking lot of Tap Furniture, Central Avenue, three miles west of the Northway. Join us for today, 1460 WOKO, Albany. Eric Satterhoff swings on the first pitch and rips a ground ball single back up the middle. The Satterholm collects hit number nine for the White Sox, his first of the ball game. One on, one gone, and Don Kessinger will step in. The shortstop has grounded out to second and grounded out to the Yankees shortstop, Bucky Dent. Kessinger, a switch hitter, bats left handed, of course, against Figueroa. Chandler's holding the runner. The pitch is hit in the air to right center field. Mickey Rivers cruising over to his left. And he lost the ball, but he still made the catch. He lost, throws back to first, and not in time. Mickey Rivers, I think, lost that ball in the sun, but recovered at the last second and made a catch right down around his shoe top. Second base umpire, Bill Kuckel, heads up on the play, raced out to watch it, and called it a catch. But Rivers, I've got to feel, lost that ball for just a moment in the sun. But a good recovery by the Yankees second fielder, uh, center fielder, and Kessinger is out. Rivers so then through the first base, but Soderholm got back. Wayne Nordhagen will step in. Nordhagen has singled and scored the only White Sox run. He's also grounded out to third base. One for two. Scores tied at one. Figueroa steps back off the slab. Now the pitch. Swing and a miss by Nord Hagen on a good hard slider by Figueroa. Strike one. Scores tied one to one. The White Sox 
scored on a one-out single by Nordhagen, a single by Ralph Gar, which put runners at first and third, and Chet Lemon's ground ball got the run in. There's a line drive over Dent's head, base set. Down to second base, heading for third, goes Trotter home, the ball gets through, past Rivers, the run will score. Ball got up the gap in left center field, and the run will score. The White Sox go out in front, two to one. There's another run we'd have to say really shouldn't have scored. White Sox should not have had their first run, but Bucky Dent couldn't get the handle on a double play ball. And now a ball gets in between White and Rivers. That should have been cut off in the gap, and a double for Nordhagen. Trotter home scores. Ten hits now for the White Sox. They lead two to one. And the batter is Ralph Gar, left-hand hitter. Pitches outside, ball on. Gar is two for three. Single to right and single to center. He hits this one off the end of bat, left side. By Dent throws to Clutch. Safe at third. Clutch will argue the play. Thought he had it, and that's the only play Dent had. He could not straighten up and make his throw to first in time to get the speedy guard. It was a heads-up play on Dent's part. He fed the ball to Clutch, trying to get Nordhagen coming in. But Nordhagen is called safe. And the White Sox will have runners at first and third. That'll be a base hit. I've got to tell you again, a heads-up play by Bucky Dent. He went deep in the hole, back of the ball. No way he could have straightened up and thrown Gar out. But a heads-up play, he flipped the ball to Clutch at third. But Nordhagen snuck in. Sparky Lyle now starts working in the bullpen. Gar has his third hit of the ball game. Batter will be Chet Lemon. Lemon, a right hand hitter, runners on first and third. Figueroa set, and on the ground is short. Dent has the hop, throws to Randolph for the fourth, and the side is retired. One run on three hits, two left. At the end of six and a half, the White Sox two, the Yankees one. Leads off the Yankees seven. Chris is grounded out and walked. Barrios pitch. A curve is down low. Ball one. It will be Chambliss, White, and Johnson. Right out of Barrios winds and offers. Fastball is hit on the ground. is short. Dug up by Kessinger. The throw to first is in time. One out. 
The White Sox are leading 2-1. to one. Sox have 11 hits. The Yankees have three. The one Yankee run a homer by Jim Spencer. Roy White is the batter. Roy is over two. He's routed out to first and third. Switch hitter batting left. The pitch. Hit high in here, deep to right field. Over toward the corner, though, goes Bonds and makes the catch. That ball didn't go as far as we thought it would off the bat. Bonds over toward the right field corner, pulled it in. Two down. And Cliff Johnson steps in. Johnson singled his first time up to left field, and Garth threw him out trying to stretch it into a double. It was low bridged by Barrios in the fifth. Got up and flied out to center. Pitch to him. Over at the knee, strike ball. O one one delivery. Nubbed off the first baseline. Foul. Right now, five seconds for station identification. You're listening to New York Yankee Baseball on 1460 WOJO Albany. Cliff Johnson broke his bat on that last swing, the foul ball, and he'll go back over and, or did he? Lucky Dan went over and along with the bat boy to get him another bat, and Johnson said, no, this one's okay, just need a little car on the handle. No ball, two strikes on Big Cliff. Barrios winds and deals. Johnson lines one to left field. That one's got a chance. It's in for the base hit. Ralph Garr had to play the ball on one hop, and Cliff Johnson has his second hit of the game, and the Yankees fourth. Bucky Dent will step aboard. On the scoreboard, Toronto now trails Detroit. It's four to three Tigers in the ninth. Boston, eight. Texas, four at the end of six. Dent is over two, fouls one back. Baltimore, seven, Milwaukee, nothing at the end of six and a half. Seattle, five, Minnesota, three at the end of six. California at Oakland will be getting underway in about half an hour. And Cleveland plays at Kansas City tonight. National League in a moment. Dent fouls one in the upper deck on the left side for strike two. At the end of six innings, the Mets lead Montreal 2-0. Pittsburgh 11, Chicago 3 at the end of four. The Pirates scored nine runs in the fourth. Philadelphia 2, St. Louis 2 at the end of six and a half. Other action is later. Two strike pitch to Bucky Dent. Low and away, one and two. Right here, there are two outs. Cliff Johnson down at first. Lamar Johnson is holding him on. White Sox lead 2-1. Mario shakes off a sign. Now Bucky Dent steps out. Bucky wears the shin guard to protect his left leg. Trotter home, blazing right on the line behind third, and Dent fouls one back. He reached out for a pitch away. Oh, stand down there with a the fishnet, got another foul ball. Those fishnets have uh, given a great play this afternoon. They go with those seats down there, don't they? The deluxe box seats. One, two, six. Fouled away again. This will be over the Yankee dugout and back in the crowd on the right side. Glad they got some foul balls to use those fishnets on. There's no bass or bluegill swimming around out here. Catfish, yes. All right, one, two, pitch. Line, left center field, coming on. The left fielder, Gar, and his speed brings him to it. He makes the catch. Dead is retired on a running catch by Gar for the Yankees. No runs ahead of man left. And at the end of seven, it's Chicago 2, New York 1. The day is done. It's time to let it go. It's the moment to run. Oh, dead days. Oh, dead days. Oh, dead 
about your golden moment. This is it. Relaxing after a long day with the easy taste of Budweiser. But when you say, Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. They came from across the sea. From Japan, Germany, England, Italy. Bright and eager to show what they could do. They were foreigners in a foreign land. But one thing that was true in the old country was also true in the new. Imports from every country find America is the land of opportunity. The opportunity to use champions, the world's best-selling spark plug. The plug that wins more big races. For imports, you can't buy a better plug than champions. You can't buy a better plug than champions. You can't buy a better plug than champions. Well, on Thursday afternoon, a big thrill for all of us here at Yankee Stadium as Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris raised the World Championship pennant over the Yankee Stadium ballpark for the first time in many, many years. And there'll be a big thrill for young fans tomorrow afternoon out here because you'll get a replica of that World Championship pennant. The only difference is the one you get, of course, it's smaller, but it has a full-color picture of the 1977 World Championship Yankee team on it. Those pennants will be given to all fans 14 and under who attend the game between the Yankees and the White Sox starting at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon here at the stadium. So come on out and get your pennant. George Order leads off the eighth for Chicago, one for three. Left-hand batter takes the strike. Order now has 11 hits in the seven games he has played. Figueroa's next pitch. Get on the ground a second. Two hopper to Willie. Randolph throws him out. One down. In all honesty, Figueroa should have a shutout going. A little lapse in defense by the Yankees, not errors, but uh, a couple of misplayed balls that did not go as errors, and two runs have scored as a result. By the same token, you say this, White Sox have 11 hits, maybe they should have more than two runs. Bobby Bonds, one for three, right-hand hitter. Biggie deals, Bonds takes low ball one. Figueroa has helped his own cause by picking two men off first base, and the Yankees have also turned in two double plays behind him. 1-0 delivery. Get high in the air to left field. Roy White circling, looking up. Glove up. He's got it. Two out. Lamar Johnson will step in. The Chicago first baseman is two for three. Great big guy, but he is not a power hitter. Slaps the ball around. Waits on the pitch very well. He's had a hit to center and a hit to left. He's also grounded into a double play. Figure all pitches. Breaking ball misses. Ball on. Yankees are playing the ball game this afternoon without either Nettles or Munson in the lineup. Cliff Johnson is catching. Mickey Clutch is playing third. And Clutch is playing tight to the line on Lamar Johnson now. 1-0 pitch. Line base hit out of the left center field. Mickey Rivers will come over and cut the ball off. And Lamar Johnson has his third hit of the game, and the White Sox have their 12th. They've had 11 singles and a double by Wayne Nordhagen. Ron Bloomberg is the batter. Bloomberg has singles once, flat out twice to Rivers and center. Rivers shaves him over toward right. Figueroa takes the sign from Cliff Johnson. And the pitch. Get on the ground at second base. Randolph is up. Throws on to Chambliss and that retires the side. No runs ahead, a man left. And at the end of seven and a half, the score is Chicago 2 and New York 1. Then, 
What a reputation for dependability they've made for themselves in fishing spots all over the world. Fast boats, offshore boats, whatever. Johnson has an outboard for you. From the little two to the new 235 V6, the world's most powerful outboard. Johnson's compact portables have great fishing features like shallow water drive and fast-starting mag flash electronic ignition. They're great fishing companions. See your Johnson outboard soon. Now, take the time for Johnson outboard. Now be taking my time with Brown Family. Take the time, baby. Shortly. They shouldn't be with us. Listen to the Round Family Show. We're somewhere in a special guest, Gene G. Shepard. It's the Round Family Show. We're going to end on Sunday and get it on four on 1460 WOTR. Off the Yankee half of the eighth inning. Klutz was hit by a pitch in the third, then single to center field. Klutz has been hit by a pitch. A couple of guys been low bridge. Swing and a miss by Klutz. Try to hold up. down the left side, past the third baseman, Trotter home to the corner. Clutch is going to try for two. And he slides and makes it. Two base hit. Mickey Clutch, who was not supposed to play today, a last minute replacement at third for Greg Nettles, has collected his second hit of the game. So the Yankees have the tying run at second with nobody out. That is the Yankees' fifth hit off Francisco Barrios. is Willie Randolph. Right-hander Laren Legro and left-hander Pablo Torrealba start warming up for Chicago in the pen. Randolph bust down the third baseline foul. Willie wanted to draw Soderholm off the bag to field the butt to let Clutch get to third, but he pulled it foul. Greg Watt. Randolph is 0 for 3. And he bunts off the first base side. That'll get the runner over. Lamar Johnson throws him out to order covering. A sacrifice 3 4. But Willie gives himself up to get clutch over to third. One out. The tying run is at third. And now it's up to Mickey to get him in. Rivers has popped up once, brought it out twice. Jim Spencer comes out on deck. The infield will play in tight. Well, Rivers makes contact, and unless he pops it up and hits it right at somebody, the Yankees could tie the ball game up. The pitch to him. It's a high ball one. The outfield is shallow all the way around. Final score... Detroit 6, Toronto 3, that's the final. 6, Bob foul. Back off Nordhagen's mask. Ball and a strike. Well, of all the scores for you on the scoreboard show following the game. One ball, one strike on Mickey Rivers. Barrios pitch. Hit in the air. Center field. That'll get the run in. And maybe over the head. That is over the head of Lavanado. Way to the wall. Here 
Here comes Mickey. Here comes Mickey, too. Around third. They're going to bring him home. They'll have a play at the plate. The throw. He's safe, but inside the park home run for Mickey Rivers. And inside the park home run, and the Yankees take the lead three to two. Well, it was out of here. It stayed in the ballpark, but still a Getty round tripper for Mickey Rivers. Rivers receives Getty gift certificate good to the purchase of Getty Premium. The gasoline that, according to a recent survey, sells from two to two and a half cents less per gallon than most other major premiums. Inside the park home run, and I don't know what happened to Chet Lemon on that one. Whether he lost the ball, he was playing shallow, we told you that. But I would have thought he could have got back and maybe caught the ball. But it was over his head to the wall, and Mickey Rivers was waved in all the way by third base coach Dick Hauser. The Yankees lead 3-2. Saw so a couple of Mickeys on the scoreboard. But scoring from second, Rivers. Dogging his heels all the way around. Turned it on, made a wide swing around third. The throw to the plate, and Rivers got there by Rivers. Got in around the tag. Bob Lemon is out to the mound to make a pitching change. So right now, there's a break in the action with the score. The Yankees three and the White Sox two. This is Mel Allen. Thanks to Emory's computer tracking system, no matter where in the world your package is, you can always pick up a phone, call Emory, and touch base with it. Emory, the Air Force in Air Freight. Bob Levin making a pitching change. We feel Pablo Torre Alba with the left hand hitting Spencer due up. Fans are applauding the replay as they watch Mickey dive across home plate and a head first slide. Great greeting in the dugout for Mixer Quick. He was quick on that one inside the park home run as he hit the ball over the head of the center fielder Chet Levin. Francisco Barrios strides off the mound toward the dugout, and Pablo Torrealba will take over for Chicago. The Yankees now with three runs on six hits, and the White Sox two runs on 12 hits. For Rivers, his first home run of the year. A little by play to the action. Fans, of course, giving Mickey Rivers quite a hand, and Reggie Jackson was down behind home plate leading the cheers. Rolling his hands together in the running sign, as if to say to the fans, that's what speed will do for you. So Pablo Torrealba is on. Well, the White Sox will be here again tomorrow, which will be pen and day. And after the White Sox leave, the Baltimore Orioles come in for two games, Monday night at 8.30 and Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Tuesday's game will be the first of several Senior Citizens Days this season here at the stadium. All fans, 60 and over, will be admitted to outfield box seats for just 50 cents. That is Tuesday, the Yankees and the Orioles at 2 o'clock afternoon ball game. Well, as we surmise, both dugouts were warned against uh, knockdown pitches after Bloomberg was knocked down by Francisco Barrios, or rather after Bloomberg was knocked down by Ed Figueroa. Earlier, Francisco Barrios had knocked uh, Cliff Johnson down. So that means another knockdown pitch, and the estimation of the plate umpire would mean ejection.
the pitcher and manager of the team. Tim Spencer, the batter. He's one for three, a home run. Jackson is the batter. Pablo Torrealba, left hander, takes the sign from his catcher Wayne Northaken and the first pitch. Get in the air to left center field. This time it is the left fielder Gar who will make the play, and he does to retire the side. But the Yankees take the lead with two runs. On two hits, and at the end of eight, the score, New York three and Chicago two. When you do music, it's 5 p.m., and I close up my clock for you. That's it. Right on time, my friend. But of course, any time is the right time for the smooth taste of Budweiser. When you Time less present. Anheuser Busch, St. Louis. These baby Ruth fun size bars sure are delicious, and I ought to know. Why is that? Well, it just so happens I consider myself to be quite a candy bar connoisseur. And a baby Ruth's got fudge and peanuts, chewy caramel, a rich chocolatey coating, terrific stuff. Plus, these new bags are mighty economical. Some people call them fun size, but I call them Bill White size, because they're just right for me. Hmm, I see. I'm crazy about Baby Ruth bars, and it's not easy for something to get to first base with me. <laughs> get a crank, oh, brother. Yeah. Both Sparky Lyle and Rich Gossage are up in the Yankee bullpen as we go to the ninth inning. White Sox have the lower third of the batting order. Eric Trotter, home down, Kessinger, and Wayne Nordhagen. It was our pleasure to attend a uh, welcome home luncheon for the Yankees yesterday with the proceeds going to benefit instructional television here in New York. And we're very happy to say that as a result of that luncheon, a check for $65,000 was turned over to the instructional television program. Now, I've got to say, too, I heard Mickey Mantle make one of his finest speeches yesterday in accepting the first pride of the Yankee Award. Mickey, very humble and a very good speech, I've got to say. Eric Trotter home the batter, and the pitch is in the dirt, skips to the backstop, ball one. So I should have Mickey and Roger Maris both on the dais. Henry Arn was in attendance, along with the Yankees. Pitch to Trotter home is hit high and he had a right field. Reggie Jackson cuts up under it. Glove up now, he makes the catch. One out. Don Kessinger is due, but I think we'll have a pinch hitter coming out. And we will have a pinch hitter. Henry Cruz will bat for Don Kessinger. Henry Cruz is a left-hand batter. And let's see what Henry has done this year. This will be his first time at bat. That's what he's done. Henry Cruz, six foot, 175 pounds. From St. Croix in the Virgin Islands. Got to bat 21 times for the White Sox last year, and he had six hits. Two of those six hits were home runs. White Sox got him from the Dodgers on waivers the early part of September. He's been about 203 times in the major leagues, and he's hit six homers. Left-hand hitter. They spread the outfield, the infield up the middle, and the pitch, strike call. 
Figueroa got the first one right over the heart of the plate about knee high. Wayne Nordhagen is on deck. Next pitch, down low, and the count evens one and one. The Yankees are leading three to two here in the ninth. But close to the line at third, the pitchers pop foul outside of third, no plays. Back over the dugout and into the seat. One ball, two strike count. One of the Red Sox are wearing out the Rangers. Rangers better call for some potos. 12 to 4, Boston at the end of 7. Figueroa winds and offers. High pop. This one playable by Clutch. In foul territory near the bag. He's got it. Two down. Two outs. Nobody on. The Yankees lead 3 to 2, and the batter will be Wayne Nordhagen. Yogi Berra down the Yankee dugout trying to get somebody's attention. Clutch goes in to talk to Figueroa. Nordhagen is two for three. He has singled, doubled, and brought it out to third base. He has scored one run and driven in the other one. Right-hand batter. Always hits well against the Yankees, as so it would seem. They play him to full. Well, he does. Right at death. Up. So he's got him, and the ball game is over. Bucky Dent throws on Wayne Nordhagen. 